Hello and welcome back to the Iron Man. So this is going to be a pretty disjointed episode. I just wanted to give a fair warning before we get started. I'm obviously recording this after the fact, um, but I'm kind of all over the place in this episode. I made a couple assumptions about things that have, uh, let's just say, changed slightly due to updates in the past few years since I um, haven't been playing RuneScape and then came back to it and just was unaware. Um, but don't worry, I figure it out in the long run. And another thing I should mention is I have been getting a lot of helpful comments on tips and tricks that I should be making use of. One big one is using a Guthic staff instead of the Ceridoman staff and unlocking the special attack. And I have heard those things and I'm going to do them, but I am just now, this week, catching up to the point where I no longer have things pre-recorded from a week or two ago. So we are now finally officially in real time. Um, so you'll start to see some of those adjustments that I make based on feedback. So. Hopefully we'll have more of that going forward as now I'm finally at a stage where I'm, you know, reading the feedback that you guys have and then playing the game in real time. And we are making some Slayer progress. Level 60 Slayer that should unlock Aberrant Spectres. And um, I'm not entirely sure what they drop. I'm sure their drop table has been reworked. As long as they still drop lots and lots of herbs, that's all good with me. I keep getting melee slayer tasks and I keep realizing like I could go get a black mask and the only thing that's stopping me is a few quests and probably a whole bunch of cave horror kills. Um, but like why keep doing melee slayer when I could be getting the black mask and making it better, right? So we're going to start on this quest chain. Um, the first one is big chompy bird hunting. This quest is also important for when we ultimately do recipe for disaster as well, so it's an important one to finish up. All done with the next quest in the chain, Zogre Flesh Eaters. So I'm actually not going to wait for the Gilded Altar. I'm going to use these uh, Org Bones right away, and that's because the next quest we're doing is Ghost Ahoy, so I just need a few Ecto Tokens for that. Ghost Ahoy is not technically required to do the pirate quest, but it is um, very handy just because the Ectophile teleports you here to the start of Rum Deal, and then um, close to Canifis for Cabin Fever. And it'd also be nice when we're camping Cave Horrors. So I'm going to see how much XP we get for the Org Bones. It looked like only 560, so that was a little bit less than we thought, but it still should get me the prayer level as soon as I uh, do one more Nemi Forest, so that's not bad. This should do it for Ghosts Ahoy, so I now have the Ectophile. It'll make it a lot easier just to get back here, honestly. And uh, also I won't ever have to worry about paying Ecto Tokens or having to take a charter ship just to get to um, Port Phasmatis. Okay, that does it for Rum Deal. Only one more quest to go, and then we can start killing cave horrors. Looks like we're finishing up Cabin Fever here. And there it is. The rewards for this quest are so good compared to, like, the time invested, because you get a good amount of XP, um, and of course you get access to Masli Harmless, which is exactly what we needed in order to start camping some cave horrors. Oh, that, we got so close to agility level, but not quite there. Um, anyway, I need to get about 55, 56 agility, I think, for Retricide, and I'm just going to wait to do Underground Pass until I have that level anyway, because uh, Underground Pass is a pain with low agility. Anyway, let's go uh, kill some Cave Horrors. So although this is almost certainly not optimal, I'm going to collect my miscellaneous resources just three days, well, three and a half days into it, and uh, see what we're working with so far. Um, so that's a that's a decent amount of maple logs. I probably have to wait for at least a couple of weeks before I have a good enough stock of maple logs to really just bear down in AFK fletching for a few hours, um, but that is a start, and I can use these for fire making too. Before I start camping cave horrors, I of course need to make some uh, light sources, so I'm going to start off with bullseye lanterns here. I know you need at least two of them for quests, and I'm going to make three just to be safe, but um, we will eventually need one for Tears of Gothics, we will need one for Lunar Diplomacy, and then I'm just going to make a third regular one as well. And the grind for the Black Mask begins. So the drop rate for this thing is 1 in 512, so it could take a while to get this, or we could get it right away. If it does take a while, I'm not complaining, because these are decent XP when you kill them um, for both magic and defense that I'm training. And uh, if it takes a while for us to get a drop, we might just get our 85 combat from Cave Horrors. And then I would be able to start off using Simona as my Slayer Master. This is another one of those draft tables that's definitely been updated. I'm not sure why, because Cave Horrors had a pretty good draft table as it was. But they no dropped Noted Monkey Bones now. Why you would need Noted Monkey Bones, I'm really not sure. Looks like we got it. The Black Mask. 
I didn't quite get 85 combat. Um, I guess I didn't go dry enough to quite get enough XP to uh, level up my magic and defense enough to hit that combat level. But I did get, um, I think, one, maybe perhaps two magic and defense levels from doing this. And um, I also got around 100 Renar as well. I have 40 in this inventory too, and uh, I had a previous inventory where I stayed here even longer. We're about to hit a milestone farming level after I check this cow here. And that is 64 farming. So the reason why this is a milestone is at 64 we could now raise spiders, um, which if I decided to go get some spider eggs and start breeding them, those would replace uh, sheep in my medium pens. And I might want to do that just because the check XP for an elder spider is 4,500, and um, these sheep are only giving me about, I think, 280 XP when you check them at the elder stage, so it's not much but it would require camping spiders for a while. I'll have to think about it. It's something we want to do eventually, but probably not right away. So I'm just finishing up my first game of Herbie Worby. As many of you guys have suggested down in the comments section, I uh, I need to do this mini game, or I guess it's a D&D, &D, right? Because you can do it once a week. I really need to get this done and uh, unlock the herb bag, um, and, and that's just going to be really helpful for Slayer. So I didn't know this, but instead of being based on a timer, as most mini games are, Rather, it's based on a point system, so once you gain 100 points, the minigame stops. Um, so you're always able to gain your max amount of points for doing the D&D every week. And I also have a reset token here, so I can do it twice, and I can get a total of uh, 200 points, which is just enough to buy the herb bag. Finished up two games, didn't take too long, and we got some decent XP. I went from, I think, about halfway between 48 and 49, got 49 herblor and got almost all the way to 50 as well. Um, and remember, we do want 57 herblor so I can unlock fairy rings. Um, so that's something I'm working towards right now, so this XP is helpful. So we're going to buy the herb bag, and then next week I can do this twice again and upgrade the herb bag. I'm not sure how much it upgrades the storage, but there are some tasks that drop a lot of herbs, so you're going to want a bigger bag. So it is simply very difficult to find an open world at uh, Turoth's and the Fremnic Slayer dungeon, which is annoying because I keep getting them as a task. I might have to kill these in the Chaos Tunnels, man. This is ridiculous. I looked up why people are camping them, because there's, you know, someone camping them on just about every world, and I've tried several. And I guess the reason why is farming XP, um, because they're AFKable with aggression potions, and then you can just use AoE abilities and Acetaside to burn the Morcella mushroom spores because they drop a lot of them um, and it's like 200k or more farming XP per hour so that's pretty good. I think I'm starting to realize the value in getting things like a bone crusher and seed aside and you know those are going to be grinds that I don't want to jump into right away but you know we're going to do a lot of slayer on this account but in the future um, with a bone crusher and seed aside to burn the seeds that we don't want we would be able to just click the loot all button instead of having to individually select the items in the loot box that we want to loot and you know that's just convenience everyone wants convenience so 60 slayer was one of the big motivations to go ahead and unlock the herb bag because uh, I know Abby specs drop a lot of herbs but it turns out those herbs are noted so the herb bag is essentially useless for this task Honestly, did not realize, but uh, now it's okay. It feels weird not needing the herb bag for Aberrant Spectres, though. I've been looking forward to this magic level that we're about to hit for quite some time. I think after this this last jungle horror kill, we should get it. 67 magic. I don't know if anything all that impressive happens at 67 magic, but we do have 85 combat. So our next task is going to be from Simona. And I'm actually really looking forward to Simone after doing um, quite a few tasks from Kaldar. And the reason why is because she assigns just some really crappy tasks. Simone has a few too, but there's, there's less garbage in her Slayer assignment list. Time for our first task from Simona. Hopefully it's something good. It looks like 85 combat is not enough from Simona. It definitely used to be. Maybe it got up to 90 instead? So this was completely breaking my brain because I could have sworn that Simona was 85 combat rather than 90. And I did some digging and saw, you know, people used to use the Slayer Master at 85 combat. So it turns out um, there was a patch, and this happened in 2017, which prevented people from doing this. And I don't know if the combat level was initially intended to be 90 with Simona, but it used to be the quest requirement for smoking kills was 85 combat. And once the quest was completed, you could get 
tasks from Simona, regardless of what your combat was. Um, so up until a few years ago, that was the case. And this is exactly why I was hoping to get away from Kaldar. Harpy Bug Swarms is our next task. I did one task of these. They are awful. I am tempted to use some points and skip my first assignment here. I did go ahead and cancel the task, and then I had to cancel another one because it was bad too. But we have enough points left over to buy uh, Broad Arrows and Bolts. I was really debating between this and the Slayer Helm, um, but I think just because we have the blast Black Mask and we're not getting the range and magic bonus from the Slayer Helm yet, I am going to go ahead and get this one. So we won't need the uh, ammo for all that long, but Broad Arrows are going to be a really great source of fletching XP for us for a very long time. So I can start stocking up on Broad Arrowheads and then fletching them every single day. We have yet another weapon tier upgrade that should be coming in at the end of this kill. I've been getting um, several Aberrant Spectres tasks. This is not the same one from earlier in the video, which is great for the herbs, um, and even the low-level herbs, because I'm planning on burning those for a bit of extra XP. But there is level 60 range, which means um, we can now use Dragon Weaponry, which I will not be doing, but we can also use the Red Salamander, which I will be doing. We don't have the Hunter level quite yet for Red Salamanders. It's 59, and I'm at 48, so I'm going to need to grind just a little bit of Hunter. But the added benefit is, um, you know, kind of the best way to train Hunter in these mid-levels is usually just box trapping Chinchampas. So maybe we'll get lucky and get a pet Chinchampa that we can start raising on the farm. Okay, I'm just burning a few herbs here for, um, I kind of needed something to do while I was in class. So I started working on cleaning and burning herbs and I am hitting 50 herb lore. I don't think I quite have 57. That is the next goal that we want because 57 is when you can do Fairy Tale Part 2 and unlock Fairy Rings. Um, so I'm working towards that, but I'm just kind of burning off some of the extra herbs I had from killing all of those Abbey Specs right now, and hopefully we'll get close. So I have taken a break from archaeology lasting about a week and a half, and I've showed off earlier how I've been stocking up on one Dragonstone a day just from buying it from the gem stall in Anachronia. And uh, through a combination of not quite buying one every day, missing a couple of days just because I was out of town and stuff, um, it's taken me a week and a half to get eight dragon stones, but I now have those so I can now make the um, signet rings and the pendants that I need to finally get past this roadblock that I've been at at 59 archaeology forever and get to 60 and keep doing some arc. So there is one final thing holding me back from being able to repair all the artifacts that would get me to level 60 archaeology, and that is I really need gold rune, and this is one of the more difficult material caches to unlock. Um, there's only one place where material caches are located, and in order to reach um, this location, you need to complete the Defender of Varrock quest, which is a pretty significant quest for um, really a lot of quest chains and stuff, but that is a lot of quests that I have not completed. I would need to do What Lies Below, Temple of Ikov, Creature of Fankenstrain, Garden of Tranquility, and then finally Defender of Varrock. So it's going to take a little bit of questing to get here. You know... This is an incentive to do a quest that's going to be really important to get done on the account anyway, so um, I might as well just get started. I mean, we have all of the level requirements already except for one agility level, which won't be that bad. And uh, it's going to be great to get all of this over with because we'll need Defender of Varrock anyway when we go for curses. Oops, I completely forgot that uh, pickpocketing Dr. Fankenstrain was the quest completion screen, um, but we just completed Creature of Fankenstrain and got a thieving level. All right, we're just finishing up Garden of Tranquility. I've never quite understood why you needed to finish up a bit of a castle gardening before you can start Defender of Varrock, but you do, so there it is. Next quest on the chopping block is Family Crest, which we are finishing up right now. And I probably should have done this one earlier before I cooked a bunch of desert souls. I definitely would have burned less fish, um, but I still have the majority of my cooking ahead of me, so I'm going to be you know, burning less fish with the cooking gauntlets in the future. About to finish off 51 Agility, which is the level we needed for Defender of Varrock. I just did the Southern Anachronia Agility course, um, one section of a much larger Agility course, but you still get a bonus for completing the section. Um, so yeah, we now have all the levels we need for the quest we're aiming to do. Still a couple of quests left to do, though. Oh, and another thing is I got my first Codex page. I only need 499 more of these before we can get our double surge ability almost there. We're wrapping up What Lies Below, and after this one we're just going to have one more quest, Temple of Ikov, and then we can start on Defender of Varrock. And there's Temple of Ikov done. 
I definitely remember this quest being more annoying than it ended up being. It, it really wasn't that bad. It took like 10 minutes, and uh, I had nothing to worry about. But um, yeah, very important quest lore-wise, but we'll get into that later. And we're done. Yet another quest chain wrapped up. Um, and this one, I think I need more inventory spaces to claim the reward. Just dropped all the crap from the quest that I'm never going to need ever again. And um, in addition to being able to harvest gold rune now, which is a really important resource for archaeology, um, I'm also going to get some pretty nice hunter XP from this quest, which is great because we're... Well, I haven't made a whole lot of hunter progress. Uh, I still need six more levels before we can catch that red salamander. And it's finally time for the payoff. For all the questing I did and all the many, many hours I have spent doing archaeology, it's kind of insane how long it took to reach 60 archaeology. Um, it is not a fast skill. But the reward is we get a new dig site, which is Sentisten, which is a mini dig site. You do this one from 60 to 70. And then at 70, you can go on to uh, Warforge and the Armadillion one, which I'm forgetting the name of it. Stormguard Citadel, I think. Yeah, but we have 10 archaeology levels now that we have a new dig site to go train at. So that is going to do it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. The final thing I wanted to mention before leaving off here is my semester at school has started, um, so I'm now in my program. So this semester, I'm going to have a decent amount of time to just AFK and uh, work on, you know, easy gathering skills that can be done while doing homework or while working on my literature review. So some of the stats that I'm planning on working on are uh, runecrafting, which I'm training right now. And I'm also planning on mining gem rocks and collecting gems to train crafting because ultimately crafting is going to be an important skill to level up. And then I will also want to keep up on the mining and smithing so I can continue to craft new gear as we uh, level up our melee stats. So you can expect to see all of these skills just kind of go up in the background. There probably won't be a lot of clips um, while I'm training these skills other than when I hit a major milestone level. Um, but I just wanted to say that so no one's caught off guard by, uh, you know, I show my stats tab and suddenly I'm ADRC. But that is all from me. I will see all of you next time, and until then, thanks for watching, and goodbye.